Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, maybe we're not quite there yet. I mean, it's really hard for me to tell here because we don't have fall, we don't have snow, we don't really have all those seasonal indications of the season. So I've decided it's about time to start talking about Christmas or at least Christmas books, because you do want time to, you know, pick some up from the library or order a few new ones to add to your stack. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'll be sharing some of my own favorite Christmas books in my family's collection of Christmas books. And this is a collab video. So there will be a bunch of other moms sharing their family favorite Christmas books as well. So make sure you check out the description down below to watch that playlist and find some new books that you can pick up or add to your collection. I will be linking these down below. Um, I picked up just a couple new books this year, so I will also be sharing some old favorites that I shared last year because maybe you forgot them. <laughs> so let's get started. Now this is just one of a couple of new books I added to our collection this year, and I highly, highly recommend it even for those of you who are not bilingual families or are not don't have Mexican Hispanic heritage yourself. This is a very accessible book. It's not totally in Spanish or totally bilingual. It's one of those books that just has, and I'll show you, the occasional Spanish vocabulary word inside it. So, we just, so it's primarily in English, not heavily in Spanish at all. But the concept of this book is that it's pretty much the night before Christmas, the traditional poem, but it's a twist on it. And it's Tuas Noche Buena, which is the night before Christmas, the evening of Christmas Eve. And it is a whole description of a Noche Buena celebration, which my husband comes from a family who celebrates Noche Buena and relates to all of these traditions very well. And as our boys are getting a little bit older, we are also trying to think about how we can incorporate Noche Buena traditions in our own family, what that might look like for our family. So you can see we just have a few, few vocabulary words in Spanish. It's easy to read even if you are not speaking Spanish, but it's a great kind of cultural learning type of book thinking about how different cultures celebrate Christmas, which I know many of you guys do, do try to look at how other cultures celebrate Christmas at this time of year. So, highly, highly recommend Tuas Noche Buena by Roseanne Greenfield Thong. And uh, yes, I, I think I mentioned already, I will be linking all these books in the description down below. I do want to mention, um, in case you haven't heard, which you probably have, but in case you haven't heard, our family did create a 25 days of Christmas Christmas calendar unit that we will be using throughout the month of December. This is the Spanish cover I have here for you. Um, and so we're going to be reading books from my book list for this unit. I have the Spanish version here, um, but there is a completely English version. Um, so we will be reading books in Spanish, which I don't have all of those books, so I will be doing a lot of the links, but uh, I will leave the link to this or the video about this unit down below in case you are curious in learning more about what we're doing for Christmas school, what we're doing for a Christmas tradition this year. This is one that I have heard of from several homeschool moms on YouTube. Um, one of them is Rachel. I think I, I'll try to put her video down below because she talked about using this last year. This is The History of Christmas. And this is not a little kid's book. This is more of an older kid's book. It's really neat though. It has basically kind of lessons that are a little bit longer reads on a certain period in Christmas history, followed up by suggested scriptures, discussion questions, a recipe, and then you move on to the next period in history. So this is awesome if your kids are getting older and you're kind of starting to move beyond picture books, which do you ever truly move beyond picture books? I'm not so sure about that, but I think this is really cool. I think probably my youngest sister is 
going to just read through this out of on her own and out of her own curiosity this year and have a lot of fun with that. She's really big into history and will really enjoy this one. So I picked that up for her and then in a few years it'll be at a more appropriate level for my boys. Next, The Nutcracker. This was recommended by somebody, maybe Megan from Pennies and Salt. I uh, can't remember right now, but I saw this in a video last year recommended for Christmas books. And last year we actually watched a ballet of the Nutcracker on, on online, not in person, but online for the very first time. I had never seen the Nutcracker at all. Didn't know what the story was, um, but that was really fun. I think we want to start a tradition of at least watching a video of the Nutcracker every year. So I got a book because to me it's actually a lot easier to understand the story from a book than from a play or from a ballet. So, and th these are, I mean, these are beautiful illustrations. Really, really cool. So we're going to read this before we watch the play this year, which in this unit, let me see what day. It's December 11th. If you can see the big art is on the cards. But December 11th, we'll be talking about the Nutcracker. So, that's a good one. Now I mentioned we don't have any winter where we live. My kids have no experience with winter. But I wanted to get a some kind of winter book. So, the time for us to read winter books is basically around Christmas. And of course, this is a, ca a classic. I believe it's called A Snowy Day. In English, I got the Spanish version because I could. Um, but yeah, Un Día de Nieve, A Snowy Day, obviously a classic. Probably many of you already have this one in your collection. But just a thought, you can always get it out at Christmas time to kind of bring in that snowy mood even if you don't have snow. This is Que Monton de Tamales in English. And I will link all the English versions down if I show a Spanish version. I will link to English as well. Um, this is Too Many Tamales by Gary Soto in English. And I've heard this called basically a modern classic for Christmas. I feel like from the um, styles, it reminds me of my childhood. Like these were the kind of dresses and hairstyles we had at Christmas time back then, you know, in the 90s. Doesn't that look familiar to many of you? Um, but this is also related to a Noche Buena celebration and eating tamales for Christmas. So a great... Um, his look at a Hispanic family celebrating Christmas together. There's not a ton of words on the page. It's not super long. So this is, this is one that could be for older or younger kids. But really cool. And this is very easy to find, I feel like. This is one that, I have to be honest, makes me cry when I read it. But also that's not super hard. <laughs> because I can get kind of emotional about picture books at times. This is Christmas Day in the Morning by Pearl S. Buck. And it's about a son who figures out how to give his first ever Christmas gift to his father. And it's not a thing. It's an action and an act of service. It's a farm story. So I just love this. I come from a family that uh, my, my, some of my family owned farms and worked on farms back in the day. So I have a lot, a great soft spot in my heart for the hard work of farmers. So, like, look at that. This is a super sweet book. I would definitely try to borrow this or get this if you can. It's one I want to read every year. But you can tell it's a library book. I've not managed to find it in real life yet. Now this is a book which I would say feels like a cheesy Christmas movie which sometimes you just want that cheesy Christmas movie feeling, you know? <laughs> this is a book more for older kids. It's probably too long for preschoolers, but the illustrations are super, super cool and detailed. It's a story of a guy who's been through a lot, who's lost a lot. He's turned into a crabby, crabby, grouchy old man through the losses he's faced in his life and some opportunity to show love and consideration to others changes him and it's it's a really cool story it's that heartwarming it's like a good cheesy christmas movie <laughs> so there's one if you're looking for a picture book but a longer picture book now, this is one i shared last year and will probably share every year 
I, I just have a certain kind of sense of humor that this book just has really stuck with me for many years. I find it hilarious. The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, A Christmas Story. But when you read the book, you'll kind of see in some ways it's not a Christmas story. You get to learn a lot about Hanukkah um, while you're reading it. In the beginning, they're making a latka, going through all the stages. But then once the latka goes into the hot, the pan of hot oil, he screams and he jumps out. And one of the fun parts of reading this book is just like screaming while you're going through multiple pages of screaming. He runs out of the house. But he's a very misunderstood latka because he keeps running into Christmas decorations. And the Christmas decorations talk about what their meaning is in the Christmas celebration. And then they ask, what kind of Christmas tradition are you? And then he's like, I'm not a Christmas tradition. I'm a latka. And he explains some of the symbolism of eating latkas during the Hanukkah festival. It is hilarious, but shockingly educational about both Christmas and Hanukkah in a very funny way. Um, this, it's, it's not like the super, super serious, emotional, heartwarming kind of book. Um, it's very funny. It's got a twist ending and surprisingly educational. Lemony Snicket is, of course, the author of A Series of Unfortunate Events, which I also enjoy. You do have to have a certain sense of humor to enjoy these, but I really highly recommend this one. Now, this is a treasury that we stumbled upon a few years ago, um, that we found for a very, very inexpensive, like $10 or less for a whole bunch of books in here. Let me, I'll show you the contents right here so that you can look at them. A lot of these are from kind of larger series, Merry Christmas, Curious George, Tacky's Christmas from the Tacky series, Lyle from Lyle series. So most of these are books that kind of include characters from other, um, other series of children's books. Let me see. The one I wanted to highlight is The Finest Christmas Tree, 67. Let's see. Yeah, this book is The Finest Christmas Tree. It's just a really cute story. It features a John Deere tractor and a Christmas tree farmer. So it's going to be a big hit um, with my boys because tractors, farms, cars. So that's a really cool one. If you can find this treasury... Um, I, it often seems to be on sale, which makes it a really good deal. Lots of Christmas stuff to read in here. It also does have songs in between each book. Let me see if I can find a song page. That's Lyle. Where are you, song page? So it has a song page, and the notes are kind of funny because they're always themed to the song. So those are little angels because this is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Now I did look it up to see if this book is still available and it is still available on Amazon, Christmas in America. It was published in 1991 and this is kind of gonna be an unusual pick. We actually just stumbled across this book in a free donation pile some years ago. Um, one of my siblings found it, picked it up, brought it home. And it has been a surprisingly fun and amazing treasure to get out every Christmas. It's clearly, it's not a storybook. It's not a kid's book at all. It is a coffee table book with photographs taken by many, many photographers all across America of different communities, different people at Christmas time. This was published in 1991, so it is quite old now. Right now, it's almost a look into the history of Christmas, what what Christmas looked like 30 years ago in America with different styles. Um, but it is so, it's beautiful. It's very fun to look at, to get glimpses into what different people are doing around Christmas time. We definitely take time to just get this out and let the kids page through it. There's little blurbs and little stories about the pictures, so you don't have to totally wonder what's going on here. Um, you can find out, you can read, what's the story behind this photo? What are people doing here? Oh, babies. My first Christmas. More babies. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but this is really fun. It's, it's a surprising option. So keep in mind, um, even just a Christmas coffee table book as a treasure for your family. This one, when I saw it on Amazon, it really was not all that expensive. 
It's, it's you know, an old book, A Glimpse into the Christmases of Yesteryear. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. So tell me in the comments below, what is one of your all-time favorite Christmas books? And if you have a hard time picking just one, you can definitely say a couple. You, you're not really breaking any serious rules right there. All right, I will be seeing you later. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you can, please give me a like and you can subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I would love to keep chatting with you in future videos. Bye!